Hello, Kerbalots, and welcome back to Mining the Man and more, part 23. Building around a boulder and a new rocket for Debert. Okay, so here we are starting off the launch, and this is going to be a module. It's actually a shoulder joint to get the angle that we require to to get the contours of the boulder or the asteroid that we're sending this to, which is called Gofanon, the Smith God asteroid base. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Gofanon, by the way, is a Welsh word for a Celtic deity, just in case you're interested. Anyway, here we are launching, and you can see by here, I'm going off angle, and that's trying to correct for the high inclination of this of the orbit of this asteroid. Now, trying to rendezvous and dock with a station which is at high in inclination, when you're launching at... Uh, low inclination, say like around the equator of the planet, is quite difficult and it uses a lot too much fuel anyway, so it's not something you would want to do. And that's why we're launching with this high inclination at, from the start, to make it a lot easier and save a lot of fuel. Although I probably think there's enough fuel on this rocket to do that. Yes, I'm using the wickedly overpowered rockets to build this base, that's because I want to make sure that all this material, all these all these base parts get to where they need to be. Anyway, now that we've set up our burn to get into orbit, perhaps we can talk about the comments or read out the comments that were posted on the last video. So, from Devin Connor, I feel like this video should be two videos one for the Astro mission and the other stuff on the man for another. Possibly. But, uh, you know, a space missions, you know, a space program, you'd have multiple missions doing multiple things at multiple times. So, yeah, like NASA, I know when they've done the moon landings and that, they concentrated on the one things, but that was developing technology and advancing in entire mankind. So, you could say yes or no to that. But this is KSP, and I did originally start this for Mining the Man, and I was going to do another series, but I thought, why not continue with this? We've got infrastructure in place, like Mining on the Man, and once you've achieved that, is that the end of the series? Now, I might start a new series for when we come to version 1.1, with multi-threading, I can't wait! But that's in the future, so I'm not going to change that at the moment. Anyway, let's go back to the comments. From the short line gamer, Man Escape System, M E S. He's on about the escape system I used in the last in this episode where I got the Kerbals off the surface of the man and back to curving. Yeah, I should have named it for something like that, didn't I? But all I did was provide the infrastructure for them to get back, like the rocket to get off the surface, dock with the station, and I named the the escape system uh, help I'm a Kerbal get me out of here so and uh, I suppose I couldn't change that name after that it's a bit more funny that way right from Kevin this channel is so it's cool so cool sorry I believe this is going to be a big one I hope so well I'm not too bothered this is more of a hobby I enjoy this game I wish I had time to do other games as well because I did call myself a beta I th was thinking of concentrating on engineering and um, space games but time is of the essence and you, once you've got a life and you've got a job it's a bit hard to do that isn't it so well, that's a cool commentary thank you very much from Virik67 he does a KSP channel by the way check him out if you find KSP interesting is there a Welsh god of fiery death sorry there isn't I did check if not, we need one, as we're making a lot of sacrifices to them. <laughs> yes, we are. But as long as it's the rockets and not the Kerbals themselves. I can't remember if I lost any Kerbals. I'll have to check the, um, or the Kerbal Note Center for that. Now, from Shashkam Solanki, uh, hi, or hi, Orbiter. Love the Mining the Man series. It's great. What's happened to the Minecraft series? Well... Unfortunately, Minecraft is a bit long-winded. Now, I'm reviewing what I can do other than just my uh, KSP. As you can see, I'm coming in for docking now. Sorry, I'm not paying attention to the video at the moment. I'm just reading comments. But what I want to do is see what time I've got, what I can do, whether I'll just carry on doing KSP sh short videos 
on Chaos Bee or do short videos of another game. Like Risk of Rain perhaps, but in Risk of Rain you get bored of that at some point, so that's a sort of like short lived type game. Or, you know, do different games, or perhaps I could do mini games on Minecraft, I don't know yet. I'm gonna see what I fancy doing at the moment. Because there's a lot on KSP I want to do, and but I'm waiting for the multi threading, obviously. So, watch the future, see what happens. And here we go from Joseph M. Don't forget the escape modules for the Kerbals and the Astro Base. Oops. <laughs> yes, we're not going to have escape modules on this episode either. <laughs> Sorry. Although we are sending more Kerbals. More on that later on. Okay, from a name I can't read out because I think it's Russian. They die. Unsmiley face. Beautiful episode. <laughs> yes. So I put whoops. I replied that. Whoops. <laughs> anyway, here we go. We've got our next module here. Going back to the video at hand. And we're going to dock this. As you can see, it's another shoulder joint. And I'm experimenting with different parts on this. I'm using one of the stack adapters and using the offset tools, lodge it into the signs module. And this is going to angle it up a bit more. I was trying, I was, was going to do an entire, you know, try to copy the contours of the asteroid base, but in the next one, it's, I make build it a bit too long. It's not going to be easy to do so. I may square the other ends off because it's easier to do, and the docking is not so much of a pain, as you'll see by here. All right, now I've set that as a target. Now look at the space I have in between the asteroid and the docking port. <laughs> yes, that is going to be a tight squeeze. And believe me, it is a tight squeeze. Now, uh, also, I've set the docking port as I did with the last one, and it's at an angle, so controlling this is a bit difficult because you, you look at the rocket and you think you should be pressing that button, but that does something else, so you have to keep your eye on the dock docking alignment tool. And of course, the nabble. And I'm trying to stabilize it because also we've got a spin on the asteroid. That must have been from the decoupling of the last unit. Yes, it's a bit of a problem. But we haven't got any SES control. Perhaps rather than putting SES or RCS on the asteroid, perhaps what we could do is put a load of reaction wheels on the modules that we're going to put up later on. That might give enough torque if they have enough power to stabilize the spin of the asteroid. Oh, and watch this. Cup land that goes spinning off. Yes, I done the same method as last episode. We're going to capture that pro body and deorbit all things in one go. So as we're doing that, perhaps we can get to back to the comments in hand. From Tyler H. Jacobs, I got scared, but when I remembered how bad I am at about one out of twenty fights, they die. Yes, I think I was on about the deorbiting, and yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah, deorbiting those kerbals, I got a bit. St <laughs> That's the first time I got really scared on for the kerbals. Anyway, let's deorbit this and get to the next module. Uh, from Josh Chamberlain. I am a human onion. Sorry, I cry for you. <laughs> and that's where I can't reply on his comment. Ah oh, yes, now remember, Sean Kermin has to come and secure this module. Because at a certain point, these modules will... Um, what do you call it? If I'm not very bright, I'm trying to look for the word now. They will flex under the stresses brought on by other talkings. Or perhaps even just maneuvering the asteroid around a bit when we attach some reaction wheels to it. So we have to skew them at a certain point. Now it's best to plan this. If there's small modules and one secure at either end, I think it'd be alright like this. And then attach but then attach a strut to the every other one. If you got a lot oh yes. That disappeared in the asteroid. I've got to press X when I'll release that. So we'll have to get an extra one from our supply module. So while Sean's attaching that, John Erickson, what country are you from? I'm just wondering. 
great video, by the way. Cheers. Wholesome news, that looks a great videos. I always wonder if they're going to be bad videos or it's going to be unwell received. Anyway, I am from South Wales, not the Australian one. I am from the British one. The original South Wales, you could say, because I live in the country Wales. <laughs> Okay, from the Bromo, nice fit. Cheers, buddy. From Just Chab, the best series in in your channel by far. Thank you very much. Yeah, the views have been increasing, at least on the older videos of this. I'm not sure why, and I've been promoting them more, or perhaps if they've been up there long enough that people are searching KSP and finding my vids. I don't know. Oh yeah, here we are. The uh, I'm trying to look for. There it is. That's the link from the KRS system floating in the middle of the asteroid. If I knew this asteroid was going to be hollow, I would have bought, I would have got a return for my money for the asteroid. <laughs> anyway, here we are, launching the next one. Oh yes, I did forget the first module that, uh, the second module I'd launched up in this episode, something went wrong because of the fairing I had on it. And for some reason I couldn't control it. Uh, so, I don't know, it must have been a bug. I'm sure it's the fairing. I've had problems before with the fairings. So what I did, I went back, got rid of the fairing, and I hyper-edited that ship back into place here. But this time, we're going to dock this. And there's a problem with this one. This is another shoulder joint. It's going to be a bit higher to get us over the top of the asteroid and over to the other side. Because that's quite a height to get over. The short model modules, but I attached this to our rocket the wrong way round. So what we're going to have to do is send a module, some sort of robotic uh, arm, as I said in the when I done the building the space station tutorial. I built a module with a mech jet unit that can attach, dock to other modules, and bring them in for docking on the station. And I'll do something like that, except I'll use curables in this one. Yes, I said we're going to send curables up here. I couldn't do it with this rocket because there's no attachment point. There's no docking port, which I should fix. But I don't. <laughs> anyway, here we go with the deorbiting stage. And it luckily it misses that couple of module. And a quick deorbit. Well, now the next module. Which is actually the docking module so we can use this at and dock any other module that we need to though it's having to use the rocket module although we're still going to use that module because it's already pre-built and we've got loads in stock so yeah <laughs> anyway here we go and this thing is overpowered now rather than use the normal rcs tanks and rcs thrusters i use the veron is it that correct or like to Am I saying it right? Veneron thrusters. And basically they use liquid fuel and oxidizer. Now real life ones, I'm not sure what they use, whether they use normal RCS thrusters with the RCS fuel, or they use the liquid fuel and oxidizer. But anyway, this one was really overpowered and MechJeb did not like it. I can't use the auto docking system for that. Or at least when it's on its own. So I'm going to have to do this manually, which is a shame because I... I really wanted to dock with that. Let the video run and do something else while I'm doing that. Because it saves a lot of time. Anyway, once while we're docking with that. Ooh, Mad Ramson. He said third. <laughs> third comment? Third. Third in rank of <laughs> Carl Holton. Second comment. And Kogan Kerr. First comment. Now let me look if I'm looking at the right video here. Yeah, lots of docking escape from the man. Anyway guys, thanks for commenting on my video and perhaps I should say now because I've been watching YouTube for a while and I've noticed people don't... Generally the rule of thumb is if you're asking for likes on the video, you're obnoxious if you're on your try and start. But what I've seen on the trending Someone's been doing an experiment, by the way, what a YouTuber by DocM77. Good German YouTuber, speaks English, so check him out. Yeah, he's doing seven days to die. But he asks people to like his video 
you know as an experiment and he found that he gets more likes so if you do like this video and you're gonna hit that like button or you would anyway hit that like button let's see what happens i don't really not really too mad bothered about it it just raises the rank of the video and i'm not earning a living off this so it doesn't matter oh yes i almost forgot that i was gonna do this as a surprise what's in under this fairing and yes this is science equipment i installed a mod for cameras and stuff but whoops, <laughs> yeah, I knocked the asteroid station by here, and everything's rotating. That one must have been enough force to get the entire asteroid rotated. And trying to dock with something else rotating that does not have RTS control of much kind, because I think we've got the docking probe on there, which may be trying to stabilize it. But yeah, you have to do try to get the rotation at the same time, and try to get yourself moving, because you're not attached to the asteroid, so your rotation is going to be slightly different. You're going to have to maneuver around a bit, and but hey, presto, we have done it. That was one awesome docking, if I do say so myself. Anyway, here's some of the tools I've added to the inventory of this rocket. Yes, we have an extra supply of struts. We're going to need a load for this base. We're going to have these arms going all the way around the asteroid in four places and attached at the other end. Still a bit dubious about that, if they can get them to attach. Anyway, let's get Sean coming out. We need to secure this science equipment before it flies off into space. Yes, with all these crashing of dockings, everything is going to be flying around, so we don't want anything flexing. <laughs> so hopefully these Kerbal Attachment System links will secure everything. And then we can, once this is secure, I can show you off my science equipment. Now, this is the first time I use this stuff, and I suppose you're supposed to use it in Korea mode to get science and whatnot. But, you know, it's not... I don't think it's necessary. It makes for great graphics and make you, makes this station look more like a science station. Yes, that is a seismic sensor. You attach it to a planet. I think you're supposed to use it on a planet. But attach it to the asteroid is much better because... Oh, excuse me, dry throat because you, it's something you'd use, wouldn't it? Also, by your, this is when I found out that half the stuff I couldn't put in the Kerbal inventory, which is either too big or you, you know, the Kerbal can carry or something, perhaps they were too heavy or too large a volume for the Kerbal to carry. But what I can do is attach this, it's got being anywhere sensor, whatever it's called. <laughs> yeah, I forgot to, equip his drill by there so we can attach it anyway where are we going to put the commutron to this looks like a good spot obviously and it looks a bit bearing so we need something there so extend that now we can receive the super bowl no i don't watch it but uh, the kerbals will okay let's get sean coming inside and we can review the science or start the experiments up Okay, so what have we got here? First off, we got solar particle collectors. We've got multiple ones over there on this. That's so we can collect solar pal power, pal power, not power. <laughs> Losing my sentences, words, and whatnot. But they can collect solar particles from around the asteroids. We can, so we can find out what the solar atmosphere is at at high altitudes around Kerbal, Kerbin. And also we have telescopes, which we should have used in Furno Robotics. That means we could move them around a bit. Never mind. I think they're supposed to be for te uh, space telescopes, not for asteroids. But there again, it's for science, so it's attached. We have some instruments. I don't know. A micro science bay, which you should all should know by now. Oh yeah, this one I love. It's the magnetic boom. And basically it extends out. I, th I do remember this from the Voyager spacecraft where they have these huge long antenna things sticking out to one end and that's to check the magnetosphere of any given place this could basically take the magnetosphere of the Kerbin then we have gamma ray particle collector with those long antennas again and what have we got asteroid sound experiment yes will we find an asteroid I don't know is there any asteroid nearby <laughs> Also, we have some weird equipment. I'm not entirely sure what these do. 
discarded little dish, anomalous signal sensor. Not sure, it probably depends on what... I'm assuming radio frequency, we've got a surface analyzer which shoots out a little spike through, <laughs> through our surface module, which is not good. Collect x-ray, okay, that's not going to be any good to us. Toggle scanners, I think that just sticks a little six out. We have a Kerberdine core drill, which I think again is for surface science. You could say a Kerberdine and now and again it detaches that and uses it on the asteroid. And also we have this laser lighting experiment. Now watch this, there's a goo container underneath that. And as soon as I activate it, it's, you can say experiment in the goo, but I did not realize the laser we shooting through our service module. Let's have a look at that again. Shooting lasers through the module and yes, depressurizing the entire bay. Yes, I'm using the fuselage on that mod science module so we can say Kerbals can go down through that. Anyway, the last bit of this video, which is the launch of the new rocket system, or actually it's a lander, really, it's a man survey lander for the anomaly experiment, and it is going to debird, which if you watched the last episode, or perhaps the episode four, well, the last episode, episode 21, he was stranded, he doesn't got enough to get into orbit to dock with the orbital spacecraft to return to Kirby. And he hasn't got enough to go handy for more anomalies. Now I was going to send a rocket there, or resupply rocket or resupply module, so we can supply his fuel. But I realized it's not going to have enough delta V to go to multiple modules, um, anomalies. So what I've decided, I'll build a new lander, land it for him, using mech chip. No, he, he doesn't like mech chip. He's gonna take a remote control of it now. He's decided and he's very determined that Mech Jeb ruined his life and that's why he's gonna take control of this, land it himself, and he'll control future missions on nom anomalies. Because he doesn't trust Mech Jeb, not because it can't land in one place, but because it uses too much fuel. But if you're watching this video, and I'll slow it down so you can get the uh, uh, sense of how f quickly we're coming down. I suppose in real life it'd be quite difficult to take manual control of a spacecraft for such a complex maneuver unless you had all the sensor equipment, visual sensors and such and such that you could do so. Now I know the Apollo astronauts landed on the moon and I think they found it challenging but also easy once you know what you're doing. And Neil Armstrong landed with just enough fuel, I think, to before the abort procedure and really need to be kicked in. But here we go. He's landed. But I'm sure he used more fuel than Mac Jeff would have. <laughs> anyway, now let's get Debert out of his old spacecraft here. Yeah, you can see I've used the larger lander can, which was not good. And he's doing a moonwalk with it. Yeah, that was, that was odd. I'm not sure if the animation was broken or it was just that we were on a slope. Also not linked to this series, but probably linked by subject, I've also been reading up on the Apollo missions, and I've been finding things interesting, engineering-wise. Little things, not the big things like the rockets, like, like the panes of glass on the service module on the Apollo missions. They steamed up because the, uh, the adhesive, the sealant, hadn't cured properly or something, and they couldn't solve that from the Apollo 7 until the Apollo 9. So yeah, I'm going to be reading up on there. I might state facts and figures and whatnots on there. Anyway, here we are in his new cockpit, Debert ready for another mission. If you like this video, launch that like button. And now to say, I'm Orbiter. Trust me, I'm an engineer.